Lou, let me, let me throw something out there that I'm hearing a lot from your fan base. They're saying this, this group has exceeded expectations to such a point that management almost owes it to these kids to bring in a top nine forward, a top six forward, maybe one or two with some postseason experience to kind of help them along here and just see how this could play out. Your thoughts on that logic? Well, you know, first of all, I, I, I think that, you know, a plan was set in place uh, by Brendan Shanahan a couple of years ago, uh, a plan which, uh, you know, Mike Babcock and myself and Brendan, you know, uh, really bought into understand, you know, the necessities of doing certain things and staying the course. And that is what we're going to do. I can really appreciate the way the fans think. Uh, and you know, we will do whatever is the right thing. We're not going to allow, as I said, anything to get in the way. Uh, anything to get in the way of the growth of these players, you know, to putting ourselves in a position so that, you know, a contender can, you know, survive the eight to ten years that really you build towards uh, with a certain group of players that you have. So we've got to be very careful. But if there was something that would help us not interfere with, uh, you know, the long-range situation that you did today uh, that, you know, there was, uh, you're not going to ever be sorry for, you have to look at it. But right now we're not going to get ahead of ourselves. We're going to stay on this course. I really think that's what the fans want. I think the excitement or the anticipation, I really think that's great. I mean, the fans have been tremendous, uh, but we can't allow what other people are thinking uh, get in the way of what, you know, we really feel is right uh, for this organization and the future of it. You mentioned how, how the players have earned their spot in the standings, and I couldn't agree more. And I, and I feel like your young players have been a huge part of that. Maybe people didn't expect as much from them. Maybe you guys expected um, this much from them, but not necessarily dealing with this year's deadline. But has their play, the young kids, the rookies, pushed the accelerator a little bit on what folks looked at as a long-term rebuild? Well, I, you know, there's no question. I think if earlier in the year, if you looked at our roster on a piece of paper, uh, there were some veterans that we took back in trades that we made for different reasons um, and took back some younger players, uh, took back a contract here or there, you know, made some business decisions as well as hockey decisions, uh, you know, for the well-being of, of the team and the future of the cap. Uh, the they, we thought that maybe they would be here, and some of the younger players needed a little more work. But they came in, they earned the role that they're in, they earned the job that they have, and, and they excelled with it. And yet there's going to be ups, there's going to be downs, and that's where Mike Babcock and the entire coaching staff deserves a tremendous amount of credit because they didn't allow – you know, maybe something that got in the way or a little bit of a slump or somebody, you know, go, you know, not being up to where you might to get in the way. We stuck with them. They stuck with them. And, you know, the players appreciate that. The confidence is a big thing. Um, and, you know, we have some talented young people here who want to be real good. They want to pay the price to be good. They'll do what's asked of them. And you have to reward them and they reward you in return. So, Lou, in terms of, of helping this team and not sacrificing any of your serious assets, and I look at the Michael Stone trade with Calgary just a few days ago, a guy who plays a lot of minutes, third-round pick, conditional fifth. Yeah. Does that market currently exist league-wide, Lou, in your opinion? Can you improve in team, well, your team or any other team? If you pay that price, can you bring in a guy that can help you and you don't have to sacrifice a ton? I think the best way I can answer that is that if there was an opportunity uh, and – the question you're asking was there. We would have done it by now. So I think that that answers the question. Will something come about? That's an unknown. But, you know, we're happy with this group that we have and the progress that they've made and where we find ourselves. Remember, this group has put us there. Um, in other words, they, and they're getting better and better, uh, you know, because of, you know, they have some experience and growing to do. And so we'll just have to wait and see. Um, but to expect anything or get excited about anything, you know, I wouldn't do that. 
I'll pick up the name a little later on, but we had Brian Burke on the, on the show yesterday, and we were talking about, one, the expansion draft, and two, the salary cap, and how that's kind of just changed the way deadlines are dealt with. We talked about kind of hitting the accelerator a little bit, and, and we know that the salary cap always plays a factor. It played a factor in Calgary with their two young stars, Monaghan and Goudreau. Is there a point where you could see where you might have to go for it because your really good young players are still on entry-level contracts and therefore a little bit more manageable? Well, first of all, I, uh, we are not in any salary cap situation today, no. nor the way we're set up uh, for the future. I think that a lot of what was done last year and the year before, uh, you know, in pri- it is prior to when I was here, uh, was with the plan, you know, in mind so that the young players who we potentially thought were going to be, uh, you know, the type of players that they're proving to be so that we could do what was necessary when their contracts were needed to be addressed. So I think that right. that is something we're not we're not concerned of. Uh, that you have to just rely on us that uh, we know what we're doing uh, with that. And And then as far as moving ahead on it, you can't get ahead of yourself. You can't right. do something just for the sake of doing it. It has to fit in with the process. Mm. Lou, what's the hottest commodity from a position standpoint heading into this deadline? Uh, what are teams asking for the most, do you find, as you're going along here? Well, uh, you know, I really don't know what other teams are asking for. Uh, all I know is that, you know, at this time of the year, you hear the word buyers and sellers. I hate those words. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, because I don't like what it says about the game. Uh, but the people who fi- find themselves out of a, a playoff position, certainly I don't think it takes any Einstein to look at their roster where they have, you know, unrestricted free agents or maybe players that are not in their plans for whatever, you know, they've been doing. So you, you can recognize that. Um, those are the people that they, they talk about the most. Uh, any major deal that involves young players, uh, you know, it's really an exception at this time of the year. It's it's not a norm. Um, and we're not in the market for that, so I, I could not really, you know, give you any insight or, or any thoughts to it. Right. Lou, I, I think I know the answer to this question, so forgive me for asking it anyway. If any of the other teams that are closely bunched around you guys right now do something between now and next Wednesday... It doesn't matter what level it's at. Does that change your thinking at all? Absolutely not. I think if I answer that question that it would, you know, then they will allow someone else to determine what is best for our organization. And you're doing something just for the sake of doing it. Uh, you do it because it's the right thing, uh, not because, uh, you know, it has some plastic uh, vision. All right, let's get back uh, to the ice. And, may- and maybe in addition, is there any news on when you're expecting Mitch Marner back to the lineup? No, he's on the ice. He's skating, uh, as you know, and it's a day-to-day. And, you know, that that's really what that is. And they, he will not be rushed. He'll be, you know, 100% when he comes back, uh, whenever that might be. Uh, Lou, finally, Austin Matthews. Are you surprised by anything this kid does anymore? Well, I, I you know, I don't, I don't think we're surprised because we see something new so you know, when we see it, we, we expect it, you know, after it's transpired. But, uh, you know, he's a mature young man. He, he's one of the young players that we have who uh, has talent, wants to be the best player out there, is willing to pay the price for it, is, you know, is accepting uh, coaching, uh, works on the things that, you know, sometimes uh, talented players don't like to work on uh, because they have skills, you know, and they come natural. But he works at his game, and, um, you know, we feel very fortunate to have him. Uh, as I've heard Mike say often, uh, we're just glad he's in our uniform. <laughs> Let me ask one more because I'm mystified at the contributions that you're getting from rookies. I, think it's, I don't think it's ever been seen in the NHL before, and I know in your time in New Jersey there wasn't a push like this from the young guys. Uh, William Nylander is a guy that impresses a lot of people with his skills. We've seen in the past that he has, uh, you know, had – some some tete-a-tetes with his head coach. How close is he to being the player that you guys want him to be? 
Well, first of all, there are always some players that you will always expect more out of because of the style of play they have and, you know, the way they bring the game. Uh, not negative, but you're always going to expect more. And yet when you look at the score sheet, you find their name or you look at where the number of points they have, you, you see where they're at. And that's a Willie Nylander who's capable of drawing you out of your seat at different times making a play like he did last night, yeah. you know, on the goal by yeah. Leo Komarov. So, uh, you know, Willie is an integral part uh, of this hockey team. He's an integral part of the future um, and brings special skills that a lot of players do not have. 